Welcome to Marmalade Juice. I'm going to show you how easy it is to take an existing iOS project and convert it to a Marmalade Juice project. Then walk through the simple steps required to get this project to build and deploy to an Android device. The project I'm going to use to demonstrate this is called Puff Puff. You can see it here. What you can see here is the original iOS project with no changes made. First of all, I'm going to show that this is a real working project. This is using the standard iOS toolchain. There is no marmalade juice involved at this point. I'm using Xcode 5 here. You can see on the left, it's a pretty normal looking iOS project. It is using a source version of the iPhone Cocos 2D project. So you can see lots of Objective-C source for the engine there. And then down here are the game classes, which are mainly Objective-C. Then we have some resources, which are PNG, sounds and fonts. When we hit Run to Build, it is going to compile this for the iPhone simulator. And as you can see, it is starting on its side here. This is because this project uses a slightly older version of Cocos 2D, and it creates a portrait view and then does a force rotate. So here you can see it running in the simulator for iOS. I'll close this down now and switch to Marmalade Juice and show you how we are going to convert it. I have already downloaded and installed the Marmalade SDK, which includes Marmalade Juice. So if I open up applications now, you'll see we have a Marmalade dot app. Double click on this. This opens up a tool called the Marmalade Hub. The Hub is the front end project management system for Marmalade. It gives you a rich interface to create and manage projects, but it also includes lots of useful tools, such as the dependency checker, which helps you ensure you have everything you need to get started with Marmalade. Opening the dependency checker, you can see that it has already checked that I have an IDE installed for editing, which is Xcode. Now let's check the Android section. All I need with Marmalade is Java installed. I don't need the Android SDK or NDK. It will just work out of the box. But when I come to making a build for a store, I'll need to fill in the signing certificate section, and I can use the NDK if I want to build additional Android extensions to use with my app. But for now, no additional setup is needed. I'll close this and we'll go straight into converting our project. From the splash screen, there are direct links to the starter tutorial and examples. When you first open the Marmalade Juice project view in the hub, you will see that there are no projects on the side here. The first step is to convert an existing iOS project. So I click the Convert Xcode button and then select my Xcode project using the Browse button. I will also check the Analyze Before Conversion option. Marmalade Juice includes an analyzer feature, which will scan the iOS project to determine which iOS framework functions it uses and provides an indication of which ones are already supported by Marmalade Juice. It is typical that a project won't be 100% supported by Marmalade Juice, but there are ways that you can work around this and add additional implementations if you want. So don't be alarmed if the output here says that there's a function missing or there is a feature that is not supported. Those can be added. After reviewing the output, I click Convert Project to continue. Marmalade Juice will now create a Marmalade MKB project out of the Xcode project. MKB is Marmalade's cross-platform project format, which is used across the SDK. The project view provides a number of features to assist you with developing your project. For example, I can open the project in the IDE, build it, switch between debug and release versions, and at the top I can select which platform I want to deploy to. Currently, Marmalade Juice supports the Marmalade Simulator for desktop testing, and Android Arm builds for deployment, but this will be expanded in later releases. For now, I will open the project in the IDE. 
Marmalade uses Xcode on OS X, so from the workflow it is exactly the same as if we were doing regular iOS development. On the left here, you can see the project. You have the original PuffPuff Puff source, just as it was before. In fact, it is the same source file, so you can continue to develop your project for both native iOS and Marmalade from the same source. In addition, you will see that there are now some Marmalade-specific parts included. For example, instead of seeing the regular iOS frameworks, we can now see Marmalade Juice. The Marmalade Juice folder contains all of the implementations of the Objective-C runtime and the iOS frameworks. So you can see libobjective-C, a few standard frameworks there, and then Chameleon and Cocotron. Chameleon is the implementation of UIKit, and Cocotron is the implementation of the Cocoa Touch frameworks. In this project, these are included as libraries but you can get access to the GitHub repository for these and include them as source if you are a Marmalade licensee. So all I'm going to do now is build this for our desktop simulator. You can see at the top here, there are different architecture options. If you pick x86 and hit run, it is now building with our version of Clang and our compiler, and it is creating a Marmalade binary rather than an iOS binary. Now it is going to launch in our desktop simulator. Firstly, you can see a little assertion pop up. When we did the analysis earlier, we saw that it didn't support some of the audio functions. The nice thing about Marmalade Juice is that whilst not everything will work out of the box, it will catch things that don't work, and if possible, let you just ignore them. So I can ignore this, and the game will continue running, and just not use those sound facilities. Another thing we are seeing here is that we have a black screen. Don't worry, this is because the game is configured for fixed landscape. But by default, the Marmalade simulator is running in portrait. I can change that in the simulator settings, and now we can see the game, but it is showing on its side. That is because, as I mentioned earlier, this project uses an older Cocos 2D version that supports landscape portrait flipping in a slightly dated way. I can correct this by modifying the original code. If I go into the source of Puff Puff, there's a line here where the Cocos 2D sets or forces the orientation to landscape. Rather than edit that out, because I still want to be able to build it with the regular iPhone SDK, I'm just going to if def this out. And I can use the S3E macro as a way of saying, am I building a marmalade binary? Run it again. And there we can see the game starting up in landscape, and I can play it. This is now running entirely through Marmalade's toolchain and the Marmalade simulator rather than the iOS one. It is currently set to the iPhone 480 by 320 resolution, but I can just go to configuration and select device emulation and change it to something more Android-like, for example, 480 by 800. By default, Marmalade is scaling it to the screen resolution, so you don't need to do anything to change that. How that works is there is a Marmalade configuration setting in the ICF file called Virtual Resolution, and by default, that is set to on, and it is using a standard iPhone size. You can turn that off, and then edit the game to make it scale however you want. Back in the simulator, I can go to configuration and play with the accelerometer. So if I want to, I can use this to control the fish. We can also debug directly from Xcode with our x86 project using the Marmulade simulator. So, for example, if I open up the code for Puff Puff and go into the actual game code here. Firstly, let's find some code where the fish collides with things. Eaten by coral is where the fish collides with the coral. So I'll put a breakpoint here. 
Now if I run the simulator, we should be able to hit that breakpoint and step through just like a normal Xcode desktop build. and you'll see a bit of coral is going to hit the fish any second. And here you can see we have hit the breakpoint, and we have got stack and trace views here. I can step through and do live debugging. And the nice thing is that if I had the source version of Marmalade Juice, I could step through the iOS framework source here as well. Now I'll show you how to get the game running on a device. Before we proceed, there is one other little change that I'm going to make here for the device build. Because we have modified how the orientation of the device is set, we will also need to make a similar change for the accelerometer. So I'm going to go into game scene here and do very much the same as before. So here's the code segment where it is figuring out how the device is being tilted and applying that to the fish. As I have flipped the orientation previously, I'm going to flip the axis of the accelerometer. Once again, I'm going to use an if def to ensure the project will still build correctly for iOS. All I'm going to do here is change the X and Y axis around. Now for the device I'm going to use, a Google Nexus 7. We need to build for the ARM architecture. Up in the architecture menu at the top, I'm just going to switch from x86 for the simulator to ARM for the device and we will do a release build, so this will take out any debugging information to make sure it runs nice and fast. Start the build as usual, and it's now building my ARM binary. We can see it is successfully built. I'm now going to switch back to the hub and use the hub to do the deployment. So in the hub, I will switch from simulator to Android. And I'm going to switch from debug to release because I have made a release build. And you will see that everything is turned green as the hub has picked up the build that I have just made. I could configure lots of additional settings for Android like icons and so on, but you don't need to make any configuration changes to get a build running. I'm just going to hit Package, Install and Run to build an APK and push it to the device and start it. And there we can see our game running on the Nexus 7 device, scaled nicely to the screen, touch is working, the accelerometer is working, and I can pinch and zoom to control the fish. And that is the start to finish run through of getting an iOS game running on an Android device with marmalade juice.